everybody. Welcome to episode 53 of My Yarn Corner. My name is Alex and I live in Yorkshire in the UK and this is a podcast all about knitting and crochet and possibly a little bit of sewing. <laughs> you will see later on in the video. Um, actually, I've just looked on my YouTube channel to see what number I was at and did you know that we have done 299 videos. So this video is number 300. Oh my word, I cannot believe there are 300 videos on my YouTube channel. What have I talked about? That is absolutely crazy. But yeah, quite a milestone, I thought. Excuse my hair, I'm having a really bad hair day. It is just not paying any attention to where I need it to go or anything today. So we're just going to slide on past that and pretend that I'm not having a bad hair day. So add many things to talk about first. The make-alongs that Danny and I are running finish on the 1st of June. So get your entries in for the hashtag test your limits mal and the hashtag take it easy mal. There will be prizes for each make-along. Um, there will be prizes for each make long. I think that's it. <laughs> oh dear, this could be one of those episodes. Um, prize winners will be announced during June vlogs. So we are doing June vlogs next month, which I am super, super excited about. I was looking on the channel the other day to see how we did the vlogs last year. Um, and we kind of did it that way. So we're going to do June vlogs because July vlogs and August vlogs don't tend to happen because as you all know I absolutely hate the heat and all it will be is me moaning about how hot I am and I will probably <laughs> annoy you all with my constant moaning. So we are coming back for June vlogs which I am super super excited about. So there is that. What other admin stuff did I have to talk about? The advents are on sale on the website. They are on sale until the 14th of May. So if you would like to purchase your advent, if you hop on over to the website, you'll be able to purchase your advent there. And I just want to say a huge, huge, huge thank you to those of you that came over and watched the video that I did with Jeanette and Karen. Jeanette from Crafty Clegs Creations and Karen from Stitches and Jacks and supported a little in well, I'm saying informal it's not informal there are lots of prizes actually in that I'll talk about the prizes in a minute um for the Eurovision sock along that we are doing the kits all did sell out I am absolutely blown away I'm not going to give you the final figure of what we raised yet but it's more than we planned um and we are just blown away then I know some people were disappointed that there wasn't more kits but we did fund the entire thing ourselves out of our own pockets and that's why there were only 12. We didn't, nothing went through my business, nothing went through Jeanette's business. It was all completely out of our own pockets. Um, Karen donated yarn and fabric and obviously <clears throat> we donated yarn as well and Jeanette donated fabric as well. And it just completely came out of our own pockets. So that's why there were only 12. If we could have done more, we would have done so. I apologise if you were disappointed. I've had a few messages off people. But I hope that you will continue to support by supporting the Ukrainian designers for the sock along. So that starts on the 9th of May, which is um, next Tuesday. Today is actually Wednesday. You see this on Thursday. So the 9th of May is Tuesday. The sock along runs until the end of May. It's for the Eurovision. The reason it's for the Eurovision is because the UK is holding the Eurovision Song Contest this year on behalf of Ukraine, because obviously we all know what's going on in Ukraine. So that's why we're starting it for the Eurovision. And the idea is that we walk with Ukraine, we purchase patterns, we knit socks, and it's about walking with Ukraine. You do not have to finish. Obviously, it's a short time frame. 
you know, the 9th of May till the end of May, many people will not finish socks, me included, once you see how many socks I've got on the go right now. So you do not have to finish. What we do ask, though, is you use the hashtag. There is a place on my Ravelry group. There is my Facebook group. Um, there's the hashtag. All the information will be linked below. And you take a picture. The only rule is your sock must fit on your foot, regardless of what stage it's at, whether you've just got the cuff or you've just got the toe or you've knit a tiny little baby sock and you can only fit it on your big toe. The only rule is to be eligible for a prize, your sock must go onto your foot somehow. If you're doing it on nine inch circulars and you can't obviously get that on your foot, then you just stick it on the end of your toes wherever you can get it. The pictures need to be socks on feet, regardless of the progress that you've made. And that will make you eligible for a prize for the sock along. There are a lot of prizes. We've had a lot of prize donations. Um, so there are a lot of pattern prizes. There are yarn prizes. There's a bag. There's all sorts of prizes, which we'll talk about when Jeanette and Karen and I do another video about it. But just thank you so much for the support for it. It has been amazing. I've got a pattern already. I've got a Ravelry bundle page, which will be linked below if I can. <laughs> if I don't link the Ravelry bundles, um, if you go on to, over onto my Ravelry, you'll see it there. And that is just a bundle of Ukraine designers. If you don't want to use a Ukraine designer, you use yellow and blue. And if you don't want to use yellow and blue, you use a Ukraine designer. They are the rules. So your sock must fit on your foot or, no, your sock must fit on your foot to be eligible for a prize. And you either have to use yellow and blue yarn or you have to use a pattern by a Ukrainian designer. I don't think I've talked about that properly at all, but you all know what I mean. You've seen the video, you know what's going on. So yeah, just a huge, huge thank you for all the support. It has been absolutely amazing. Right, shall we get in to some knitting? I've got to tell you, at this moment in time, I have nothing but socks on the needles. I have done nothing but work on socks. So I don't quite know how it's happened, but I will talk about that in a minute. First of all, we are going to start with some finished objects. I'm not sure how many I've got. Uh, four, I think. So my first finished objects are Danny's socks that I was working on on the last episode. I'm going to have to put a picture on because he's got them on his feet. <laughs> so I'll pop a picture on the screen. And they are the Stephen West Painting Honeycombs socks. And I just, I've talked about this pattern so many times. I'm not going to say it again, but I really enjoyed it. And yeah, so they are my first finished objects. For Danny's, for those ones, I did the 72 stitches size and a shadow wrap heel. I changed the heel for a shadow wrap heel because I'm not a huge fan of the heel flap and gusset. You all know this. I make no secret about it. I prefer the shadow wrap heel or an afterthought heel. So yeah, they are finished. So Danny's year of socks is on track. I am caught up with everything. I've got new socks cast on, which I'll talk to you about in a minute. But to give us a little bit of a sock break, I'm going to talk about the next finished object. So this is the next finished object. This is the Mysterium tea, and I eventually got it finished. Oh my word, this was on the needles for so long. It was ridiculous. The yarn is wool and vine and it was a gift from my lovely friend Sue for my birthday, which I'm just so pleased. I kind of did a little bit of a fade. If any of you know the Mysterium tea pattern, you will know that this is not it. <laughs> it is heavily modified. It should have had a huge lace section on the bottom and on the sleeves, but I kind of lost the will a little bit on this pattern. When I cast this on, I'd kind of lost my knitting mojo a little bit, so I was finding the whole thing really difficult, and I just wasn't feeling it as I normally would with a project. Normally, when I start a project, I really get into it, and I really get excited, and I love every second of it, and I get it finished. I didn't feel that with this one. So I kept it plain, kept it easy zoom knitting and 
I just got it finished in the best way that I could. Now, it's a lot shorter than most of my t-shirts. And again, I was just, I just lost the will with it. I really had lost the will with it. But my idea was I've got some gorgeous summer dresses, which are like t-shirt dresses with little straps on them. And sometimes they're just a little bit chilly. This would look perfect over those summer dresses. I've got a grey one, which this would look perfect over. So although it's quite a cropped style, it would look really nice over the um, dress. I'll pop a picture on the screen of me wearing it as well so you can see what it looks like on. But it is quite cropped. It comes just above my hips, which for a t-shirt to wear, that's a little bit short if I've only got a pair of jeans on, but fine with a dress. Um, I did the size three, I think. It's got this rolled neckline, which is lovely. It's not annoying. It's just lovely. And it's just basically a standard t-shirt. So you can see that I put, rather than the lace around the arms, I just did ribbon and exactly the same on the bottom. Rather than the huge lace section here, I just did ribbon here. So it's really, really nice. So it's finally finished. I can finally wear it. If any of you have been around for a while, you'll know that the last Mysterium tea I made, while it was blocking, one of the cats got to it and completely ruined it. So while I was blocking this one, I was so careful, absolutely so careful. So it survived the blocking process and it's done. So that is finished object number two and then we have finished object number three is something completely different now before I show you it I'm gonna pop a picture on the screen the pattern I've, I've already put it away upstairs um it is by Beatrice Macy Designs and it's called the Bagu Pouch I'd seen this on Ravelry and oh it's just one of those things that's just lovely just absolutely lovely so this is my version and it's got this drawstring casing I made the larger size the size difference between the pouches is just width so if you make the small size it's just narrower it's about like that um, I wanted it for yarn, to keep yarn in, so I made the larger size so I could get two cakes of yarn in, which I absolutely can. It's a four-ply project, so I've used Drops Nord and some hand-dyed yarn, which was one of ours. I have made a modification to it, so before I get into the knitting of it, this bit here was supposed to be stocking stitch on the outside but I wanted the stocking stitch on the inside just in case I put needles into it I didn't want any needles grabbing on the pearl bumps so I changed it so I've got stocking stitch on the inside which I thought was quite clever I wouldn't say it's a beginner project it's completely doable if you concentrate but I wouldn't say it's a beginner project so basically what you do is you are casting on the yarn. You cast on onto one needle, then you two colours onto one needle, and then you separate in. So from that point onwards, you've got two needles going on, and you're knitting the front and the liner at the same time. It was a little bit fiddly, and when you get the pattern, the pattern looks so much more complicated than what it is. And it's nothing to do with the designer. The designer has done an amazing job at writing the pattern because it's so clear that when you're reading it and you're knitting it, it's completely making sense. When you look at it without knitting it, you think, oh, I can't do that. But once you actually start knitting it, it's completely makes sense so if you're on the fence about doing it and you've maybe looked at the pattern and thought I really can't do that you absolutely can just trust the pattern there was a couple of places in it where I thought 
I think the designer's got this wrong. I don't think I should be doing that. But it wasn't. It was me. The designer was absolutely right. And the second I got to that point, I thought, of course, yes, that's what you do. So it's not a beginner pattern because you're using two needles. And that's that's the only reason. The, it's I can't explain it. How is the best way to explain it? Yeah, the only reason I would say it's not a beginner pattern is because you are casting on two colours onto one needle to start with and then separating them. And that's it. The rest of it is, I think, really easy. And this bit here where you get the... You can put the card in between. I just think it's genius. Absolutely genius. It was so easy to thread that card through. It really was. I've popped a little button on here and a little handmade label on there and it's just lovely. So I've been using it to pop yarn in. There's no yarn in it at the minute because I wanted to show it on the podcast. But yeah, it's just an absolutely fantastic pattern. So Beatrice Macy does have some amazing patterns on Ravelry. I bought a few patterns over this past few months of hers and they are all just something a little bit different. And I get into that stage with knitting. Sometimes it's easy for me just to just work on garments or just work on socks. And sometimes I just need something completely different where it brings the fun back a little bit and it gets the cogs turning a little bit. And that's exactly what this pattern did. I am beyond pleased with it. I just love, just love this design. I mean, look at that. It's just so beautiful. It's on both sides as well. I didn't even show you the back. It's just so, so beautiful. So that is that. I will be making more Bagu pouches because I just think they are fantastic. So that's that. And I have one more finished object. I just need to grab the sock blockers. One second. I'm back. So my other finished object is the Celeste Socks by Sock Witchery. I have reluctantly saved these for the podcast today. I've been itching to wear them. So these are there. The yarn is one that I dyed myself, which I absolutely love. But look. If I turn it. There you go. You can see that design it's like all little diamonds it's absolutely gorgeous again shadow wrap heel I cast on 64 stitches for these and I absolutely love them they are so pretty if you're interested I did six repeats of the pattern for the leg and seven repeats for the foot standard toe which I don't actually know what the toe I use is called, but just a standard toe and a shadow wrap heel. And I've started doing 15 rounds of two by two ribbon on my socks. I quite like that. These are just, I think they're my favourite socks. Do I say that all the time? I think every sock that I make is my new favourite sock. I am beyond fickle, but they are my new favourite sock. The texture is just so nice. And I don't think it's bringing up. I wonder if I put it on my hand, whether it'll bring up that pattern properly. Better. It's just so beautiful. It really is. They're a gorgeous, gorgeous pattern. So these are by, like I say, Sock Witchery. And they are lovely. So they are finished as well. And that's it for finished objects. It's just been socks. And I haven't knit on all these over the past two weeks. The Celeste socks, I had one made. So I only had to knit one to finish them. The Mysterium tee only needed sleeves. And considering it was just little cap sleeves, it really didn't need much. So it's not like I've done that much knitting, to be honest. But yeah, so that is those. Right, let's get into some finished objects. I'll just pop these back. Did I just say finished objects? I meant to say works in progress, not finished objects. So, I just seem to have been working on socks at the moment. There is minimal, and I mean minimal, work being put into the slip extravaganza. I'm going to show you it anyway. I'm not sure... 
I think I was on the, I was, I was on the triangles the last time I showed you it. Now, the slip extravaganza has been on the needles forever at this point. I think I cast it on in like 1974 at this point. It's ridiculous. But the rows are taking an hour, an hour to do the row. And I just, I don't have time during the day just to do an entire row. So I'm, I'm kind of not picking it up. And it's concentrating row as well because you need to count. So I'm going to show you where I am. And I'm mid row because I really couldn't finish the last one. Right, are we ready? I think I can... I think I can open it out. So I did do the triangles and that, that's the only part that I really didn't enjoy. I'm saying I'm mid row, look at me. I've only got this far into a row, goodness me. So I'll show you it like this. These are the triangles where I was last time. Now, I love the shawl, absolutely love the shawl, but oh my word. I have, I'm doing the early finish on this. So I literally have 20 rows to go. That's it. And then the eye card bo uh, border. But oh my word, it's taken a while. So I've not picked it up in so long. I am desperate to get it finished, but it's just been in time out for the past week. So I am making extremely slow progress on this. And I'm hoping to have this finished this year. But at this point, I just don't know whether it'll be finished this year. There are just under a thousand stitches on the needles, which I've done before with the anthology throw. But with this one, because you're having to count and concentrate during the day, there's just such a lot going on that I don't have that hour to commit to a project that I've got to concentrate on. So we'll just see. We'll just see how it goes. I'm going to finish it. But it's taken a while, but look how pretty it is. Isn't it gorgeous? But yeah, there has been extremely small progress on it. I think I've only got, um, let me have a look. Oh, I don't know. I think I've only got two rows to go, then I've finished with the pink. God, that's bright, isn't it? That's it, two rows and I've finished with the pink. And that'll make me feel like I've made progress, I think. But yeah, so that's that one. I have also been working on socks. So I said at the start of the video that all I seem to be working on at the moment is socks. And it really is. I'm on a complete sock kick. I just seem to be casting on socks. I've got every intention of casting on a new pair today. And I've got the sale starting next week, so I'm casting on some more next week. And I bought the Helen Stewart Sock Society Season 5, which starts tomorrow on May the 4th. So I'll be casting on socks for that as well. I'm not going to make myself feel guilty. Sometimes with the podcast, there is an element where you think, oh, I best not cast that on because I've got something similar on the go and I need podcast content. But I stopped doing that a long time ago. <laughs> so at the moment we're on socks. So I apologise. But I also know what I'm like and how fickle I am with projects. And I'll have probably cast on something new by the time it comes to the next podcast anyway. But I have been working on my Easter socks for me. So I finished the first one. This is the bag that I got from Jeanette for Easter, which is the Cadbury's Cream Egg inspired bag and yarn. And this was the yarn. You've all seen it before because I made Danny's socks first. So he's got his and I wanted a matching pair for me. So I've just popped my sock blockers away. So I'm just going to hold it up like, put my hand in it like this. So this is it again. And it's just gorgeous. For Danny's, I just did contrasting heels and toes. For me, because I don't have a lot of yarn left, I've done contrasting cuff as well. So my second cuff is cast on and on the way. I would have liked the leg slightly longer than what I've done it. That's only 40 rounds. But I am short on yarn I've got just enough to finish my sock and I think I might have just enough fingers crossed I'm hoping to have nine grams of this left if my maths is correct 
and then I can put the remainder into my C2C blanket, which is still on the go as well. Another project that is still on the go. Um, I haven't shown that in ages. It's very nearly finished. I will show you that when it's finished because once you've seen one square, you've seen them all. So I don't need to keep showing you. But yeah, that is still on the go. But I'm hoping to get a little bit, have a little bit of yarn left over to put into my C2C. So that's them socks I've got on the go. I also, the other day, I was looking for um, a highlighter pen. I have a box under, can you hear the dog snoring? Honestly, hang on. I've had to just wake her up to ask her to stop snoring. <laughs> How bad's that? Poor dog. Um, I have like um, a little box underneath the table in the lounge where I keep everything, my scales, my, my needle cases, everything goes in this box. And I was looking for a highlighter pen and came across a project bag. I thought, what's in there? It feels like it's got a project in. It has scrappy socks. I can't even remember when I started them. So I've got them on the go as well. I won't show you them because there's only three sections in each so I've got them to work on as well I'm doing Danny's socks I cast on Danny's May socks yesterday so you all know that I've been doing the Stephen West for Danny the Stephen West year of socks I have got the ebook but I have said all the way through that if there's a pair of socks that either I don't want to knit or Danny's not over keen on I'll just do a vanilla pair so the pattern did come out I will show you it it's an amazing pattern. It's an absolute amazing pattern. And I will make it at some point this year. Um, it is the striped tile socks, which are those. I mean, look, aren't they gorgeous? I am just not in the headspace at this moment in time to have three cakes of yarn on a project. The slip extravaganza is going on and I'm just not in that. I can't cope with three. It's three different colours and they will all be on at the same time because you're carrying yarn. So I'm just not in the right headspace for it at the moment. I may make them next month um, but at the moment I'm not. So he's got a vanilla pair of socks which are... I'm in the middle of a heel as well. I was working on them this morning, but I'll show you, which are here. So I'm just putting the shadow wrap heel in now. I really like these, really like them. So the yarn is one that Danny dyed. It is called Not For Danny, and it's the red and black yarn. And I've paired it with just plain black stripes. The only reason I've done that is because I find it I used to make only vanilla socks once upon a time. Um, up until the back end of last year, I think, I only ever made vanilla socks. And then I sort of fell down the rabbit hole of socks with a pattern on. And I really enjoy them so much. And I just find that socks knit up quicker if you've got something going on in the sock. So my Easter socks that I'm making for me and the ones that I made for Danny were both vanilla and they took ages because they were just vanilla. Now these are still vanilla, but the stripy vanilla. So I'm carrying the yarn. I've only got one attached at the moment because I'm on um, the heel. So I'm just popping two stripes in. There are five rows per stripe, apart from this one, which has accidentally got six in. Don't tell Danny, he'll never notice. Um, but there are five stripes. Because I've only got two colours going on, you can easily as I've learned from all the Stephen West socks that I've been making, you can easily carry the colours. You don't need to be cutting it off after each stripe at all, so you can just carry them. And just having that little bit of something going on, it makes your socks knit up quicker because it's very rare that I'll leave a sock mid-stripe. I think I'll just finish this stripe and then I'll leave it. So you're always working in five row increments. And they, I started this on Zoom last night and I have actually, I did all of that last night because, and it's purely and simply because the stripes, had they not been striped, had they been picking it up, putting it down, picking it up, putting it down. So that's why I've put a stripe in it. So there are those as well. I'm hoping that they're going to be finished before I start the sock along next week, but I'm not going to guarantee it because it depends what the Helen Stewart pattern is and whether I get 
into that one and you know you know how it is we're all the same as crafters it's very easy to have as we all know i've done it so many times these grand ideas of i'm just going to work on this i'm going to be monogamous and i'm just going to work on this it's going to get finished and it's going to be absolutely lovely and then i will choose another project and i will just work on that I have grand designs of being that way, but I'm just, I get bored sometimes. And sometimes I am monogamous. If I've got a pattern that I really enjoy, like the Penguono, the Advent pants, they were patterns where I didn't put them down and I only worked on that because I enjoyed it so much. And I love finding patterns like that. It was the same with the Bagu Bag by Beatrice Macy. Once I started that, I started it, not Sunday gone, the Sunday before, and I finished it on the Thursday. I didn't put it down. I just loved it. I loved every second of it. And we do have those projects, but it's also okay to have lots of projects on the go. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. So, do you want to see the tiny bit of sewing I've done? Right, one second. I'm back. Right, so... Who do I blame? <laughs> I've wanted to make a quilt for quite some time. I was telling Karen about this and Jeanette about this and they both said, Alex, just go for it. Just go for it. And it was one of those projects that I had always been so intimidated by. And I still am. I haven't got to the bit that intimidates me yet. Um, but I thought, you know what? I am just going to go for it because I'd really like a little quilt. So I had some special fabric that my friend Belinda, oh, I need to tell you about that as well, um, that my friend Belinda sent me last year. And it's lovely. It's Texas fabric. She's um, from Texas and I just loved it. So I made myself a project bag out of it and I kept some for something special. So this is what I made. It's not a huge quilt. It's just a nice size quilt and I am beyond pleased with it. I cut all this fabric out myself and stitched it all together. It's not a charm pack. I have measured it and cut it out. And I just, I just love it. I just love it. So I am still quite intimidated because it's the next bit that scares me. I'm waiting for some wadding to come so I can actually finish it. I've got the backing fabric. I'm waiting for the wadding. I think... I've done a mistake by putting this bit on because if I hadn't have had that bit when it came to the quilting process it would have been much easier if that wasn't on I think I don't really know I've kind of got to I'm gonna go do the quilting up and down in lines but I'm gonna have to stop this neatly here I followed a video, a tutorial video by Lovecrafts. I will link it below. It was fantastic. It made it really easy. And I'll link that video below. But I would have rather have not put this on it. I could take it out. But I'm not going to do. Um, because now, when it comes to quilting it, I need to be really neat. Unless, my other thought is, there's a bit of thread there. Unless I don't take the quilting right to the top, I just come up, go across and go down. And then I would get all the way down to the bottom. And then just go along there. And then up. I might do it that way so I'm not like cutting it every time. If I hadn't have had this on, it would have been much easier. I'd have just come up to the end and then gone back down the other way. But this is kind of... Do you know what I mean? It's getting in my way a little bit. Unless I quilt it completely different and just do random, which I don't think I can. But we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I'm waiting for the wadding to come. I've got thread everywhere now. I was working on this the other day. Right? I had to go to the shop and I went to the shop and I looked at myself and I was just covered in cotton. I just thought, Alex, you should have checked the mirror before you came out. But yeah. I'm really pleased with it. Yeah, I just regret putting this on already. The idea was on the video, you put this on, you quilt it all. They had you going across, putting masking tape all over it and going across, which I think is great, but I don't think I'm ready for that with the first quilt. I think that's probably a bit advanced for what I can possibly do right now. 
um, and then you would put some binding around the top. So I'm just going to see. I don't expect it to be perfect and it's not. A lot of these squares do not line up at all. This one here being the major one. Can you see that? But in the grand scheme of things, what does it matter, in all honesty? So the wadding should be here today or tomorrow, I think. So I'm hoping to get on with that by the end of the week. So that is that. So I just mentioned my friend Belinda from Texas. She actually has started... Well, she had a YouTube channel anyway where she'd put little bits on. Um, but she's gone more... Um, regular with it now so she started off with the texas yarn crawl so she's done the texas yarn crawl i think it was last week and she's been doing that and filming the process all the way through i was speaking to her last night and she said she's going to be putting a podcast up possibly once a month to start with belinda is lovely so I will link Belinda's channel in the description box below. You will all love Belinda. I guarantee it. She's absolutely lovely. And there's to start with, you've got all the Texas yarn crawl videos to go and look at. And then the monthly podcasts to look forward to. I couldn't get my words out then. The monthly podcast to look forward to as well. So yeah, Belinda is just fantastic. And I am so pleased that she started a YouTube channel. I really am. It's going to be amazing. So if you would like to check out Belinda's channel, I shall go and I shall link it in the description box for you. Um, and yeah, that is about everything so far, I think, for this fortnight. I've mentioned the June vlogs. We are doing June vlogs, which I am super, super excited about. So that will start on the 1st of June. Don't forget, everybody, the make-alongs finish on the 1st of June. We're going to be... I'm not sure how we're going to draw prizes for those yet. What I might do is just do a random number generator and then just go and count on Instagram if you... Oh, I've got I've got email entries as well and I've got some Facebook entries. I think what we might do is just put names in a pot and pick one um, and do it that way. I think that might be the easiest way. I don't know. I'll figure it out closer to the time. Um, so yeah, that ends on the 1st of June, everybody, so don't forget about that. And that is everything. Absolutely everything. I thought it was going to be a much shorter episode, but I've still waffled on for 37 minutes. <laughs> I'm really sorry. There's going to be another video next month, no, next week, which is the patterns video that I've started doing at the start of each month. Um, I will do that next week. And yeah, thank you as well to those of you who came to the shop update. That was just brilliant. The shop update went really well. So thank you so much. Oh, I was going to talk about the Notions tins. Let me just show you these. Hang on. Let's have a shameless shop shop plug while we're here, shall we? I wanted to show you the Notions tins first. They're a new product um, that are in the shop at the moment. Now, I think I've only got three left. Four. There are four left. So these are them. And they just say choose knitting. That's a pink one. There's two pink ones at the moment in the shop. And there are two blue ones at the moment as well. I haven't even stolen one of these yet. So these are Notions tins. But they are also a really good size for holding your cables. Now, I'm going to show you mine. I have... This is why I've gone for this size tin. I have this size tin... Um, just a plain one in my bag in my chow goo case I got it last year and what I do whoops that was a good catch what I do is I keep my cables in it it is fantastic for storing cables and if you have some nine inch circulars you can probably fit them in it as well it's really good for storing cables they are exactly the same size, so they are really good for storing cables and stitch markers. They're only £4 each, which I think is a really good price. 
pop one in each of your project bags and you've got a constant stitch marker holder on you at all times. It's a screw top, which are the ones that I prefer. I've got a little um, stitch marker tin. I'll show you over here. I've got a lot of these ones, but I do struggle to open it because it's so small. So I'm going to do myself a few of these ones as well and have these dotted, dotted around um, and pop stitch markers in this. So yeah, we've got those in the shop. There's only four left in stock, but if they sell out, I'll just do some more and pop them in over the course of the month. I, for this sort of thing, I probably won't wait for an update to put them in. I'll just pop them in if they're getting low in stock. We did have a talk about the shop update, um, Danny and I, the other day. And things like that, I will just pop in through the month and keep the official updates just to yarn. I think I'm going to do it that way from this point forward. Because it getting all the yarn ready for the first of the month, and then if you're getting all of that bits ready as well, it's such a huge amount of work that it will be easier just to keep those in stock and have a run in stock. But I'm going to show you what yarn is left in the shop while we are here. There are plenty of skeins of yarn left. My absolute favourite. Only one of these sold and I was shocked. So shocked. I thought this one would have been the absolute sellout. This is Butterfly Kisses and it is just my favourite. Look. Look at that. Isn't it beautiful? So I thought that would have sold out. And I'm so shocked I still have one in stock. We have Kissed by a Rose. I'll go through these really quickly just so you know what's in the shop. Where am I going to put them? I'll pop them there. Switch. There are two Kissed by a Rose. There are two Duck Race because we had the um, carnival on Monday, so we did a duck, a duck race colourway, which we had the carnival on Monday, and the duck race is our annual event that we have, and it isn't live ducks. It's about 500 rubber ducks put into the river, and they are all got numbers on them, and whoever crosses the finish line first wins. My duck didn't win, but that was what inspired that one. There is Picnic by the River. There are two of those which are stunning. Look at those. Some of this is old stock as well. One Springfield. Spring has sprung. Lime and Lemon, which is incredibly bright and summery. This doesn't sell. I will take it. This is Summer Sky. And Danny did a carnival one as well, which are these ones. And this is Carnival Day Parade, which is just gorgeous. Through that one. And I think that's about it. We also have Vintage Garden. Look at that. This is just highly speckled. It's lovely. It's got like um, a yellow theme running all the way through it. Some some a bit darker than others, but the rest of it is just speckles. It's beautiful. And that's Vintage Garden. So, oh, there is one left. Hang on, let me show you this one. That's coming out of its skin. Why is that happening? This is Vintage Rose. Look at that. So, yeah, there are some yarns left if you want to go and have a look in the shop as well. And that really is about it, I think, now. I have just been waffle, 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 waffle. So I'm going to go. I hope you've all had a lovely, lovely two weeks. I will see you, hopefully see you all for the start of the Make Along on Tuesday. Jeanette, Karen and I are going to do another episode at the end of the Make Along to draw prizes and show off our socks and one thing and another. So do join us for that. And then we've got June vlogs to look forward to as well, which is going to be fantastic. So thank you, as always, everybody, for just coming back time after time, spending a little bit of time with me. I do really, really appreciate it. 
it's just lovely knowing that when I come on and do a video, you all leave such lovely comments and such nice interaction that it's just, it's lovely. And that is why I still come back fortnight after fortnight because you're all just amazing. <laughs> so I will see you all in two weeks, everybody. Bye-bye.